So welcome to the presentation four of uh, this algebraic structures course that I am uh, teaching for an online class. And the textbook that we are using is this abstract algebra and applications by Thomas Judson. Uh, you can Google it, it's available free online. So if we have a set uh, A and uh, a set B, all right, defined by uh, these symbols, okay? And uh, then, uh, so what we have is we, a relation between these two sets is any subset of A cross B. So for example, I can take uh, say, R that is defined by this, okay, that is right here, okay, and this is a subset of A cross B, all right, so this is a relation from A to B, okay, now let me just use pencil, that will be faster, so this is a subset of a cross B. So if I did this, say I'm enlisting the set A and the set B, and let's list their elements. We got W, X, Y, Z. And here I got alpha, beta, gamma. Okay, so what we have is that uh, W is related to alpha, W is related to beta as well, X is also related to beta, and Z is related to alpha. So this is a relation. Now notice this, what has happened in this relation is this, that first of all, this guy here, is left out. So when we take our function in this course, what we have to look at is that the domain or the set of the elements that have an assignment in the in B, it doesn't have any element that's left out an assignment. So for example, Y has not been assigned to anybody in here on the right hand side. And another drawback that we would uh, try to avoid will be that here, see, W is landing at two different places, okay? So we are not going to allow this. That is, we cannot let one element from the set on the left to go to two different elements on the so let's clear our canvas just a second. Okay. All right. So what we are going to do is that we shall now take our set of real variables and then let's take a subset. Again, let's call it R. Okay. And that's a subset of R cross R, that is we are going to, or there are two R's, let me just change it to something else, okay, uh, call it S, okay, we are calling it S. And we are taking X, Y in R cross R, such that X is equal to sine y. Notice we have a difference here. It's not that y equals sine x, x is sine y. All right, and this is r and this is r. So let's quickly graph it and see what we get. So we got our uh, free graphing calculator and we graphed uh, x equals sine y here. Okay, uh, sorry, let me change the color to blue. Okay, and line thickness also, uh, 
let's uh, it's all right okay now what i'm going to do is uh, this notice this that if i take say one half all right and then i take pi over 6 of course that's a point on the graph but at the same time 0.5 and say i take 5 pi over 6 that's another point on the graph right so what's happening here first of all all these guys here you know they are not assigned any values and this value one half has been assigned two values uh, so remember this you did it like this that this fun uh, that this graph it fails the vertical line test because this input has more than one distinct output so if we zoom out uh, we can see that it has lot more distinct outputs so this is what we are going to avoid so let's write this part a little formally so what we are going to say is that a subset of a cross b is a function that is a relation is a function from a to b if number one for all elements of a so for example here notice this here we have all these guys left out right so for all elements of a we have a unique assignment in B. Sorry about the handwriting. So, here in the red, we have for all being violated, right? And if you look at the purple, purple line, all these guys, they are kind of disturbing the uniqueness. That is, we don't have uniqueness because of these. So, let's take another example. Now this time, let's take say W, all right, a subset of R cross R. And this time we are defining W by X, Y in R cross R, such that Y equals sine X. So now if we go to Desmos, so here we will go ahead and put y equals sine x. Now you can see that uh, in this case, every, I mean, x can be any, any real number can be input here. Okay. And at the same time, you can see for every input, we have a unique output. That is, it is passing the vertical line test, and we can do this for y axis, you know, that this guy sign lives in between negative 1.2 and positive 1.2. So we can go ahead and uh, refine the graph if we would, if we would like. So in this case, we have an output for every input from R and each input has a unique output. I would stop repeating myself like that. So we are just slightly def refining our uh, def graphical check for to in order for f to be a function from r to r to this. That is, every vertical line meets the graph exactly at one point okay so that's what our refinement will be now notice this that even though this function x equals sine y is uh, not a function from r to r however if we do this if we just uh, look at 
negative one to one as domain, okay, and uh, restrict the right set to this, then this does become a function as uh, we can see from Desmos. So you can see I'm taking x to be between negative one and one and y to be between negative pi over two to pi over two. And now if I put x equals uh, sine y, now you can see that this gives us a function between, sorry, function from negative one to one to negative pi over two to pi over two. So remember under, you know, in this uh, situation, you have been working with the function y equals sine inverse x. Now let's go back to algebraic structures, okay? So now let us take a relation from say r to r, okay? Or f is a subset of r cross r and here we are taking f to b say x to x all right such that x is in r so here if we look at it you know we have 0 0 1 2 2 4 and negative 1 negative 2 if we go ahead and draw a line so we will have uh, then, you know, this as our, this as the set of points that belong to F. And graphically, you can see that this does satisfy the vertical line test, okay? But now say we have to do it algebraically. So by algebraically, what do we mean? We mean this, that uh, for, uh, each x in R, we have a unique element in this R, right? The other copy of R. So we do for every x, we have two x in R, right? Now, we have to show that the assignment is unique. So a way we will show that is this, that you see this here, that our fx is what? 2x. So we can say whenever x1 equals x2, okay, what we have is fx1 has to equal fx2. And that can be easily shown here that x1 is x2. That tells us that twice x1 is twice x2, right? And that tells us that fx1 is fx2. So that's a you know simple way of showing algebraically that for every input from this domain set, we have a unique output or we have a unique output for any point that we choose to take as input for this function, all right? Now we got these six examples of six functions, f1, f2, f3, or not six functions, rather six relations. And we have to check which of them is a function and which of them is not. So here you can see that uh, every input is covered, right? And at the same time, we don't have anything going to two different destinations. We have two and five going to the same place, but two distinct elements landing at the same place is no problem. So we have to answer, is it a function? So answer is yes. Okay, this is a function, right? Okay, let's now take up F2. So here, what we have is that we got five in this set, okay? that is not covered. Now remember this, everything in the, let me call it informally, the starting set should be landing somewhere in the, uh, in the set that contains the range, okay? So five is not covered, so this one is not a function because nothing is assigned to five, 
okay and uh, so let's look at this one here so here everything is covered right but what happens is this that 3 is assigned to two different destinations that's problem because every element has to go to unique image or unique assignment okay so that uh, makes this not a function as well okay now in here you can see that again everything is covered we don't have any double arrow si situation like this so this one looks good and uh, so does this one just slightly in different way right that everything goes to a unique destination so this answer is also yes and I think uh, this one is also good everything on the in this set is covered okay everything is covered here and uh, nothing is going to two different places so the answer is yes and uh, now let's just take two special kinds of mappings one would be this one because what you would see here in the F4 that uh, every element just uh, goes to, I mean, every element goes to unique image, but distinct elements go to distinct images. So in this way, this function is a one, one function, the same one, one function that you did in algebra and calculus. So once again, you can see this is a one one function all right and uh, so is let, let's just take another function okay say for instance if i take uh, this one okay then uh, okay then so we have so here i'm taking a function in a you know with different assignments okay here and so this is also a one one function because distinct elements go to distinct images while on the other hand if I have a function like this that 2 goes to beta and 3 and 4 both I say 5 all of them go to delta it will still be a function but will not be a one one function okay so a way to check whether a function is one one or not so say you took this function fx which is uh, three times two to the x right so a graph is this and uh, it is a function passes the vertical line test but remember for one one you had a horizontal line test and all it tells is what that if you take any point here it it has just a unique point landing here or two diff distinct points in the domain set okay, cannot go to the same point in the range set like this one let's just take another example now here say we take a different example that is fx is x square you saw that it fails the horizontal line test because there are two points that are being assigned to this point four over here right okay so let's see how we do this algebraically all right so let's take up our first example that we had graphically so to show this as one one and we are going to go algebraically this time what we are going to show is that two distinct elements cannot go to the same element in this R on the right hand side so we may say it like this that say I have the images of x1 and x2 the same okay so say f of x1 is the same as f of x2 all right that must imply that x1 and x2 are the same okay so if these are 
going to the same place that means these are the same elements right so to show that this statement is true so let's just go in one way so we got oops, sorry about that okay all right so here we have this so if fx is if fx1 is equal to fx2 what that means is that that means that uh, these guys will be the same right okay all right and uh, that these two elements are the same okay and uh, then these are the same that means we can divide the equation by x and uh, what do we get we get simply this that 2 to the x1 is the same as 2 to the x2 now we are going to take this property we will do that quite a bit right now because we are not that deep into analysis that if i have two powers on the same positive base the same then the exponents will be the same so this implies that x1 is the same as x2 of course you can go deeper analytically but we are not doing that okay so here we showed it so f is what this function f is 1 1 right okay now on the other hand say I took uh, let's take the other function that we considered that is let's call that function g because uh, only too much mixing of the symbols so g is what did we take there we took x square right now here we have to show that this is not true so what we are going to do is we are going to go by contrapositive that is we'll take two elements that are not the same but their images under g are the same now we i took an took an easy example for you that is a square so you know for instance say negative one and one they have the same square so i'm going the other way around right that is i'm going negative one is not equal equal to 1 and what happens here and but fx f1 or rather g1 is equal to a g of negative 1 equals g of positive 1 right okay instead of and we could say but that's why that would have been fine as well okay so because each one of them is one so what you got is g, the function g is not one one okay now just a terminology that a one 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 function is also called an injective function okay and so this function is injective and uh, is the square function is not injective okay and uh, likewise you can uh, see uh, for example we saw a little while ago that if we take a function hx as say 2x then we can show that it is an injective function again we'll go in the same style uh, okay I'm not going to bore you with these kinds of calculations too much so let's just keep it here for a few minutes okay so here we got this hx1 equals hx2 implies that 2x1 is 2x2 I think we might have done something like this a few minutes ago but anyways let's just write it again just for a few seconds okay so 2x2 and that implies x1 equals x2 so that means that uh, this function h that we just defined is an injective function from r to 
R, right? So H is a, just a second, H is a function from R to R, all right, and it is an injective function, okay? So in this is injective. Now, let's just go towards another kind of function, which we just saw a few minutes ago. Now, on the other hand, say if we have a function from A to B or, you know, here, it's a relation, okay? Then uh, if the range of F and what do we define as range of F, all those points in B such that fx equals y for some x in a, okay? So if the range of f equals b, okay, then we call the map an onto map or a surjective map, okay? So for example, we just saw a you know, a little while ago, that if I take fx equals x square, remember? So this is one copy of r, this is another copy of r. So f is a function from r to r, then this is not surjective, okay, or not onto, okay, or not surjective, because if I take so negative one in R, okay? So there is no X in R, or there is no real number R, such that X square equals negative one. So what happens is that the range of F is not equal to range of the right-hand side set, or on the other hand, Say I took another function, okay, a function that we just uh, took, say fx equals, uh, yeah, I can take fx because we are not on the same marker board. So we are still taking f from r to r. This time I'm taking fx equals to x. So in this case, you know, this is the line y equals 2x, all right, for any number here. You know, we have a number here on this copy of r, or in other words, for any y in r, what we have is y over 2 belongs to r, and then f of uh, y over 2 is 2 times y over 2, that is y. So what happens is for any element in here, there is an element here such that the image of that element is y. So this is onto or surjective. Now, if a map is both 1, 1, and onto, okay, we call it 1, 1, and onto map, or there is another terminology that you may hear, that is, the map is bijective, okay? Uh, now let us take something with slightly different flavor. Let's let M2 be the set of two by two matrices with real number entries. For So for example, I can take A as, uh, say, I'm just going to take a matrix, uh, say, 2, 5, uh, 3, 8, all right? And now we are going to define a uh, map F, and uh, what we would propose to be a map, we still have to check whether it is a well-defined map or not, okay? So from M2 to the set of real numbers, uh, that is, R, you know, so we are defining it by 
uh, the image of uh, matrix A or uh, we, we should just write say it's okay symbols will be a little big but that's all right so this is equal to the determinant of this matrix okay which is simply this right and that is a d minus uh, b c all right so for example if you take f of a okay f of this uh, given matrix a right here what you will get is two times or let me write it the determinant of this matrix and i'm ignoring the big brackets okay so that is two times uh, say eight minus five times three so 16 minus 15 is one and uh, what you can notice is this that is say i take another matrix for instance this time i'm taking the matrix say eight three okay five two now notice this this matrix and this matrix they are different but when you write the determinant it is still 16 minus 15 that is one okay so you can see if two matrices have the same entries uh, it's like pretty routine to show that this product would be the same so it's a well-defined map and for any matrix with real number entries you can compute this quantity and uh, but you can see that uh, we have uh, the these two elements like this first matrix that I took and uh, the second matrix they are not equal okay but but uh, their images were equal right so so this equals the image under this of this uh, other matrix right to five so what does it show that this is not one one or this is not injective because two different elements are going to the same value that is one okay so here f is not uh, one one or not injective all right now let's see if f will be surjective and what is f f is uh, this uh, map from m2 to r and f of uh, a two by two matrix a is simply its determinant okay so i'm very fast switching symbols but uh, just be tolerant all right so take any real number any real number say y in r okay you can see you can easily construct a matrix that is uh, that is just put y here put a one here zero here and a zero here so what happens then f of a will be y minus zero that is uh, the determinant of this matrix would be simply y so for any element of y here we have an element which is being carried over to y so f is not one one but what you saw is that f is onto or or surjective that's what uh, terminology was okay so uh, and remember if it is one one onto or injective and surjective both we call it bijective uh, now let's say that we are given a map f 
from A to B and map G from B to C and these are these sets are finite and here I have listed the uh, elements of this set okay uh, inside them. So if f is a map from A to B or function from A to B and g is a function from B to C then you can define a co composition of these two functions from A to C and the way it's defined is this that if I give this an input from A uh, let me, okay, so by X, I'm just uh, using a generic symbol for these guys. So any input would have F act on it first, and then whatever this uh, image lands under G will be the final destination under F composed with G. So for example, Say we want to see where would F be taken by F composed with G. So what we have, sorry, where would A be taken here? So A goes to alpha here and alpha goes to W, right? So what will happen? A will go to W or G O F of A is W, right? Then B goes to gamma, and where does gamma go? Gamma goes to U. So B will go to U, or in other words, F composed with G of B will be which element? U in the set C. Now C goes to beta, and beta goes to V. So what happens? C will go to V, right? So F composed with G of C will be V. And then D goes to gamma and gamma goes to U. So D will go to U. So that's how the composition of these is defined. And of course, we will do those in uh, case of you know, much bigger structures, okay? So let me very quickly take a different type of example. And now let's just do a quick review from Algebra 2. Let's say we have two maps, F and G, from the set of real numbers into the set of real numbers. So here we can define uh, F composed with G again from reals to reals, right? And if I look at this, then uh, what happens is we have uh, for any input x, this is what we got. So this is g of x is square. Now what does g do? It just takes the exponential of any input. So it will be e to the x square, right? And in this case, we could not do that in the previous example, but in this case, we can also form G composed with F from R to R, and uh, that uh, will be given by, so here, what do we do? Here, first we apply G, okay? And that means that this is F of E to the X, and what does F do? It is squares every input. So that will be e to the 2x. Now, you know this. For example, say take uh, x to be 3. So you know e to the 3 square is e to the 9. e to the 3, if I do the quantity square, is e to the 6. They are not equal. So what happens? these two maps may not be equal. So composition of map, uh, even when defined from the two sides, may not be commutative as you saw in the case of matrices, that even if the multiplication was possible, it was not commutative, okay? Uh, now say we have a map or function from A to B, G from B to C, and H from C to D, 
then with f and g we can construct a map from a to c and we already have a map h from c to d right so in this manner we can use h and f composed with g that is okay uh, talking too symbolically but that's okay so like this i can apply f composed with g first and then this would give me a map from a to d all right sorry and at the same time notice this that we have a map g from b to c and h from c to d so with this we can construct a map with uh, g composed with h all right and uh, and that will be a map from b to d right and uh, we already have f from a to b so in this manner we can construct uh, this map now that is compose f uh, with g composed with h right and this is going to be a map from a to d again all right so we have two maps constructed from a to d one is uh, this one and the other one is this here and the book and you can refer to the book for the proof or you can do it yourself okay that it doesn't matter which way we follow they are going to be the same okay that is this composition is going to be this going to be equal to this for for any input x from here all right so book does a good good job of proving it and i'll just uh, leave you to consult the book for this okay now let's look at some other properties of compositions say we have a map f uh, from set a to set b and a map g from set b to set c then of course we can form a map of function f composed with g from a to c now let's let f and g be one one or surge or injective okay so what happens here a goes to alpha and alpha is going to star so a goes to star here similarly b goes to beta and uh, beta goes to the triangle so b goes to the triangle c goes to gamma gamma goes to the hexagon so c goes to the hexagon uh, and d goes to mu mu goes to the quadrilateral so d also goes to the quadrilateral so if two maps are one one then their composition whenever possible that will be one one as well okay so let's just go ahead and prove it algebraically so we are given a function f and a function g which are both one to one functions okay then we have to show that their composition is also one to one and what i would do is that i'll just write it in handwriting you know what is written here in typed form so what we have to show then is that if uh, two elements are being carried to the same image then those two are equal or these two inputs if they have the same output then the inputs must be the same so what we do here is this that uh, f composed with g x1 so this is given right and which means uh, what is this as you know g of f of x of 1 and here i got g of f of x2 now g is 1 1 and 
these two inputs have the same output. So what will happen? That these two inputs have to be the same. So input here is the entire fx1 and here it is entire fx2. And this happens because g is 1 to 1, right? Now f is 1 to 1 and again uh, f of x1 is the same as f of x2. I'm just saying in, it in a different way that then x1 has to be x2 because f is 1 to 1, okay? So what we did was we just accomplished by this consequence of implication that f composed with g is 1, 1, okay? Because if two inputs have the same output, all right, then the inputs have to be the same. And the book does the proof for you that in case both of them are onto f and g, then the composition will be onto as well. And then as a consequence, if f and g are both, say, bijective, then the composition will also be bijective. All right.